from Whole Foods, and I'm about to pay for my groceries with my. <laughs> That's the coolest thing ever. What an absolute frickin' moron is the first thing that comes to mind. The second thing is slavery through convenience. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name's Zukradowski here of WeAreChange.org, and we have a lot of absolutely wild and bewildering news to get into, especially when it comes to the story of the decade that there's a lot of interference with. There's a lot of disinformation. There's a lot of propaganda. There's a lot of things that very powerful people do not want you to know about, as, of course, the drum beats for war keep beating on as domestically and internationally things are getting more chaotic than ever. We're going to be talking about that, plus all the latest news here on this independent media broadcast. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, you could get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com, and the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast is being shared around widely on the internet, showing a local woman at a Whole Foods using her handprint as a form of payment in a dystopian technocratic nightmare that is becoming a reality all throughout the United States, a system that has already been implemented in many ways in China, a part of their larger social credit score that there's no escaping, especially if you dare to commit a political thought crime, which is going to have you punished, ostracized, and screwed over in their society. And that's how they keep people obedient, compliant, and acquiescing with the wishes of lunatics that are gaining more and more power and authority over you because you think it's going to be more convenient than actually taking out physical cash and paying for your goods. Math is hard, so yeah, let's give my whole entire digital footprint biometric identification system to the technocratic overlords that are going to sell your privacy to the highest bidder. Holy cow. And, and, and governments and surveillance states and psychotic genocidal status. This is what they got going on in China right now where this system is not voluntary like it is currently in the United States, but mandatory. Yeah, you have a thought in that country that doesn't align with the political establishment? There's no going on the train for you. Good luck trying to make it by and surviving in that society. This as central controllers in the United States are creating situations specifically in major urban environments where crime is the new normal and people are left asking for more authority, more power, more police officers that they recently detested like this woman that we played a video of yesterday describing an incident that she went through trying to go shopping in San Francisco where she said she was accosted and assaulted by a man that today she is accusing of being a well-dressed white man. No, it was a very well-groomed and well-dressed white man. Also, this is incredible. Yeah, which kind of makes you wonder how much of, of what she's actually saying is, is the truth, how much of this is just internalized propaganda, as it is fair to say that there are a lot of people that are being victimized, that are being hurt, and these situations do deserve to be taken seriously, and sadly, they are not by the current ruling establishment that usually likes to sweep these incidences under the rug, even though they are becoming more and more prevalent in our modern day society with clips like this coming out as the quote new normal That must be one captivating book, as of course we are lectured time and time again by absolutely insane individuals who don't like to work hard, are extremely rich and privileged, and keep whining to us about some made-up arbitrary unfairness that allegedly is institutionalized, even though all the institutions are bowing down to the woke policies, implementing them to the point of absurdity. But hey, as criminals are allowed to run free and literally get released out of jail as the people defending themselves are prosecuted, to the fullest extent of the law, hey, hey, at least 
the former president of the United States is being thrown in court for uh, allegedly mishandling some uh, paperwork and uh, documents. Uh, yes, that's our current reality as we're going into the 2024 presidential elections that are becoming more turbulent than ever. This as today, a judge in this case demanded to know why the DOJ wanted to use a grand jury from out of state during this entire proceeding which is out of the ordinary way that this procedure is usually done. As, of course, I think it's fair to say that there is a lot of uh, political prosecution going on here. This, as the former president of the United States, is restricted from sharing details about one of these particular cases to the general public, which Trump's lawyers are arguing is a violation of his free speech rights. This, as finally, it looks like news over these indictments is losing interest in the American public. As, of course, the more indictments that there is, the less interest there is from the American public, especially when it comes to the reaction to all of this, that the American people are becoming numb to. This as the hyperpolarization of our political system is something that I think is an extremely negative consequence for the American public, something that's not good for everyone here, as the hyperbolic, sensationalistic, emotional-laden language here is enough. And I think it's fair to say that the American people just were used enough already and are sick of it all. As, of course, the latest comments from Nancy Pelosi don't help the situation as she is now claiming that the United States will, quote, come to an end if Trump is reelected. This, as we have to realize here, that Trump started his presidential campaign kind of wavering, telling people to take questionable procedures, and now has been leapfrogged and promoted to the main political opposition party, as some people would say, as a direct result against the establishment's pressure and push on him, which essentially has allowed him to become more popular than ever. I have a very interesting theory about this. We're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more later on today on LukeUnfiltered.com, a special video, a special broadcast, only available to members of LukeUnfiltered.com. Along with your membership, you, of course, get three masterclasses, a forum to talk to like-minded individuals, and there are a lot of extremely smart, awesome human beings, a part of the forum where we all talk to each other. Those conversations, all available only to members, as well as a members-only store, meetups in real life, as we did them in Austin, we did them in Tampa, we did them in Miami, we did them in Los Angeles over the, my birthday weekend, and we're going to be doing more, probably one coming up in Milwaukee, and probably a monthly one here in Miami, as as long as I'm here, why not just continue to do a monthly meetup? I think we're going to be doing it very soon. More information about that contest, giveaways, exclusive offers only available to members of LukeUnfiltered.com. And you get to support independent media at the same time for less than 50 cents a day. And your support and contribution is needed more than ever as we are working on some really interesting projects, expanding our efforts and doubling down, especially during a key critical time during the elections where information is going to be absolutely crucial. Lots of information is going to be denied to the American public, and we're going to be doing our best with your support through LukeUnfiltered.com, which we thank you sincerely for participating with, and we are going to make sure that we provide you a lot of offers of value. That brand new spanking video only available for members is out right now as we nearly have a video ready for you almost every single day just for members, just for being a part of this quasi-secret, not-so-secret society that you could sign up right now very easily, quickly on LukeUnfiltered.com just by clicking this button. Click the link down in the description below. Put in your email. Put in your information. And I will see you there right after this broadcast. As, of course, we are not done here as we have to talk about the story of the decade. A story that I think is definitely worth talking about that sadly a lot of people on social media are disincentivized from talking about as it's important to note here that us talking about this story has led us to probably being fully demonetized downranked in the algorithm and absolutely screwed over by a lot of the top players at google as this is a, a, a very important story but but, but a story that yet again, a lot of powerful people do not want you to know about. The story that, in my opinion, never really ended and is just beginning as we only know still a very small percentage of exactly what was going on here as there are some latest developments, especially when it comes to one of Mr. Epstein's associates, Leon Black, that was just pictured with Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, 
at the U.S. Open along with other luminaries and billionaires who were all hanging out with each other, friends of the royalty as well, hanging out with an individual that is currently being sued for allegedly taking advantage and forcing himself on a Down Syndrome child. Holy fracking cow! Just when you thought, these people can't get any sicker. These people can't get any crazier. Yes, you heard that correctly. This man... Leon Black is being accused through Epstein, through his connections at the mansions, at the island, forcing himself and doing unspeakable, horrible things to a small, mentally disabled child. Yes, just when you thought it couldn't get any sicker, it couldn't get any crazier. Here we are with this man still in society being celebrated, being promoted, and, you know, just hanging out with Jared Kushner, Ivanka, the friends of the British royalty, other billionaires, like it's nothing. Now, that right there is is a scandal that I think is definitely worth looking into. As these latest new court documents and allegations against Leon Black, that is 71 years old, who's a billionaire, made by a 16-year-old girl with Down syndrome is absolutely shocking. Now, of course, Leon Black is denying these allegations made against him, but he has already paid the U.S. Virgin Islands $62 million in settlement money after being issued a subpoena, asking him for all of his communications with Mr. Epstein. In response to the government, they're asking them for his emails, his text messages, his phone calls, and the photos that he took on that private island. He literally just ended up paying them $62 million to settle that case. This, as of course, a lot of money changed hands, moved from one person to another person, paid off a lot of victims, paid off a lot of local authorities, police officers, judges, prosecutors, FBI agents were all involved in the hurting of thousands of small children for over 30 plus years. As we know from the latest allegations and lawsuits, allegedly JP Morgan and Chase played a major role in all of this knowingly knowing that they were a part of a larger operation that was doing all of this right under their eyes, which, of course, they skirted rules, regulations, and standard procedures and allowed Jeffrey Epstein to do whatever he wanted to, as, of course, routinely paying off victims was normal, according to J.P. Morgan and Chase, and didn't raise any alarm bells, even though there's many instances of him paying $1.1 $1.1 million through J.P. Morgan and Chase, which didn't raise any alarm bells as, of course, he was paying off victims. This, as we're finding out, that J.P. Morgan and Chase is also settling a lot of their lawsuits and not trying to reveal a lot of the information of how culpable they were within this entire operation. And if you're banking at J.P. Morgan and Chase, you probably are banking with a bank that knowingly facilitated the hurting of small children in many awful, horrible ways. Allegedly. Now, what's really going on here? What really happened here? Again, we still do not know because a lot of these powerful people are literally just settling out of court, paying people off, paying a lot of the victims off while the court system is making sure that we find out very little about this entire saga, which we desperately need every detail and fact about since, of course, many of these powerful people are still in our modern day society and have gotten away with horrible crimes that are even unspeakable here on this particular family-friendly broadcast, leaving marks on them physically and psychologically. Now, what's going to happen to this one particular case with this one person that is accusing Leon Black of hurting her when she was a child? Well, we're going to be paying very close attention to it, but this is a story that I think is worth following and paying close details to, as of course, the general public is left picking up the pieces from a government that has been running a cover-up operation of this entire saga for a very long time. This, as of course, many of the properties, many of the tapes, many of the documents, many of the evidence found in this case still has been denied to the general public and not acted upon by the Federal Bureau of Investigations that even failed to look into many of Mr. Epstein's properties inside of the United States. This has many of the same associates, many of the people same tied into Mr. Epstein are still walking around freely with no inquiry, no question. This as a lot of the information is still being blocked by judges from the general public, which I think is absolutely a crime in itself. As of course, there are still so many questions. There are still 
so many victims that have never had any real justice here. Prince Andrew, by the way, was just told to hold back on his memoir, mainly because his version of, of events and his version of the truth are, quote, problematic. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't say. This has a lot of very powerful people, even a part of these platforms, probably were all involved here. Who do you think was involved here that we still don't know about in the general public? Let me know down in the comment section below, as of course, we still are just scratching the surface about something that was absolutely horrible, something that was absolutely the, the biggest criminal elements in this freaking entire world with the most disgusting actions that you can't even talk about. And essentially, most of these criminals have gotten away with all of it. And that right there is a travesty of injustice. If you believe so, share this video with your friends and family members because YouTube sure as hell doesn't like us talking about these subjects. But the truth is more important than the algorithm, in my opinion. This is why we released this video today. Your support on, on LukeUnfiltered.com, our own platform, more crucial than ever. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys supporting us there. And that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.